Hello, I'm Llewellyn King, host of MECFS Alert, coming to you today from Incline Village, Nevada, where I am at the Cimarron Clinic, the clinic that has been founded by the admirers and supporters of Dr. Daniel Peterson, who is a legend in the treatment of chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis. The clinic is only a year old, but Dr. Peterson's efforts go back to the outbreak here in 1984-85. I'm talking to one of his patients, Christine Weichhaus. Christine, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, how long have you been ill? I've been ill for 19 years. Uh, so from the age of 20, I believe. Yes. Well, I was actually sick when I was 15, diagnosed a few years later. So tell me your story. You got the disease. You were living in Southern California. I was in high school, and all my friends were doing sports and all these wonderful things in clubs and I was really sick. I couldn't do anything and didn't go to prom, missed out on all the teenage life. Um, it was for quite a few years in high school in a wheelchair and uh, was able to walk down the aisle at graduation, which was a huge uh, milestone for me. Shortly after that, I became so ill and I found Dr. Peterson and uh, he was gracious enough to accept me into his practice and was able to help me. And shortly after, I moved up to Incline Village to receive treatment with Amplogen with Dr. Peterson. And that, for the next six or seven years of my life, uh, took up every single day I had and was my job. Your job was being treated. It was. It was lab work. It was being poked with IVs. It was seeing the doctor and going to pharmacies. What were your symptoms? Uh, severe fatigue, um, in severe cognitive impairment, a lot of pain, sore throats, swollen lymph nodes, the classics, and uh, chronic infections, just unable to get over the smallest cold and things would turn into pneumonia. And uh, I think it was a pretty classic case. Amplogen and you didn't get along well all the time, correct? I got along very well with Amplogen for several years and had almost about two years of a healthy life. And my dosing changed, things, uh, my body just changed and it became that that was not the best drug for me. And I uh, switched to gamma globulin, IV gamma globulin every week and that to this day is my rock. It's just wonderful. And you're able to function. I believe you sell some cosmetics when you're feeling well enough to I support do. yourself. Or I do. To my parents support me right now. Uh, they are of retirement age and would both love to be able to retire, but because of the huge uh, price with this illness, you know, financially in every which way, they have to support me. And so they have put off retirement in order for me to be able to receive medical treatment. They're my true heroes. Tell me about hope. Are you hopeful? I'm very hopeful. In fact, we have an infusion center here, but I call it my hope center. Uh, we sit there and we all receive different treatments and there's the researchers buzzing around and to me it, it symbolizes hope for my future. I'm very hopeful. What, what do you find to get through the day when you're confined to your apartment? What do you do? I look at what's good in my life and I thank God for what I have because many don't have a physician such as Dan Peterson. Many don't have the access to Cimarron research. Many don't have the insurance that I have. And so I count my blessings and I can be laying flat on my couch and unable to do anything, but I can be grateful and that gets me through the day. I'm currently taking Vistide. I've been on and off for the past several years and it seems that my body responds so well to it. it what is Vistide? Vistide is a chemotherapy-like drug, uh, not used to treat cancer in my case, but uh, used to treat the cytomegalia virus. And it's extremely effective, it's extremely expensive. It's an IV drug, I come in at eight in the morning and I'm here for a good four or five hours. Can you tell us how much it costs? It I think costs about $900 a treatment. And yes. that, that how long is a treatment? A treatment is um, about six hours, and that's twice a month. And that, that, but that has a big effect for you? It does. I feel incredibly terrible. I feel almost as if I want to die for the, about 
two days after the infusion. But then I perk up and I have a couple days where I can clean house or visit with a friend and I feel like a normal person. It's just a wonderful gift. You're in the unhappy position of never having had a normal adult life, That's have true. you? That's true. So you can't sort of say as it was before this terrible thing happened. I consider it a blessing that I don't have anything to compare it to. That's very interesting. Yes. I mean, I, this is a, a terrible subject, but it's very interesting because so many people have told me about the lives that they lost, what they had before this terrible incursion, this kidnapping of their yes. life, this taking away. It's a taking that never never gives back. That's true. Why, why do you think, do you think that that we're on the verge of a breakthrough. I get hope and possibility is all around this building and I was wondering what inspires it. I do, I see Dr. Peterson working with other researchers um, down at Bond University in Australia with Dr. Knox who is a brilliant uh, researcher as well and I see so much hope. Um, and what really encourages me and just brings such a lift to my soul is seeing young people who are coming out of university wanting to go into medical school and um, th they understand our illness, and they want to learn more and they want to help us find a cure for chronic fatigue syndrome. Have you been able to do any outreach yourself to young student doctors, etc.? I have not. I, I would imagine that that's terribly important to try to get some young doctors who haven't, two doctors came up against outbreaks. That's obviously, incredibly important. Obviously Dr. Peterson and Dr. David Bell up in New York, they came up and became dedicated, dedicated the rest of their lives and their practices to CFS. But right now in medical school, sadly it seems to me, and I've talked to a lot of people in medical school, they've never really heard of it. It, they may have heard of it in passing, so there is no school study. Uh, a social friend of mine, a doctor, uh, laments this, that, that it's, not, it's not raised in medical school. It's not, you know, they talk about pneumonia, but they won't talk about this. They talk it's about true. AIDS, but they don't talk right. about this. It's not on the calendar. It's the disease that's l hidden in plain sight. It's true, and I've had... Uh incidences in hospitals and especially in, in emergency rooms where my physician Dan Peterson will speak with the emergency room physician. I believe over the phone the ER doc will say yes I understand this is what she has but when they come to speak to me they don't believe me they won't treat me correctly they won't give me the proper amount of elevated pain medicine doses that I require um, they tell me that I'm crazy that the world's more sensible than this that this can't be happening this is not possible but yet I'm in their emergency room with incredibly difficult situations sometimes, and it is extremely important to educate our physicians young and currently practicing uh, so that we don't have, patients don't go through the trauma of what I've been through and what so many other patients have been through. They have a term for the, the way of siloing or, or stovepiping, yes. where physicians decide quite amazingly early on their specialties and go with them. Um, if you had your druthers, how would you lead your life today? If you woke up tomorrow and you were well again, uh, how would you deal with that? I would love to be a nurse. Um, I really have wanted, since I was an early teenager, to be a nurse, um, especially now even more so to give back because I've been given such amazing care by nurses at Dr. Peterson's office and other uh, facilities. And I would just, I would love to be able to wake up tomorrow to give back everything that my heart is just so full of and to live a life of hope and of joy and just spreading that hope to others. Christina, I hope that comes about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like to sponsor MECFS Alert, please contact us at mecfsalert at gmail.com. Help us to help you.